So this lecture is on the subject of ombudsman. The term came from Sweden and was introduced there first as a person who deals with complaints against local government and national government and investigates complaints independently. Now, ombudsmen were operating successfully after the Second World War in Scandinavia and the role was introduced into this country approximately in the 1970s. The role has gradually expanded internationally and it can cover both public appointments and ombudsmen who are nominated by particular trade organisations as well. Most of ombudsmen are funded by the state in one form or another, except those who are appointed by trade bodies. Usually, but not always, an ombudsman is an experienced lawyer or, and or an expert in that particular field. If the ombudsman, ombudsman considers they have jurisdiction, they will investigate a complaint and then they'll draft a decision on whether the complaint is upheld, partly upheld or rejected. The Ombudsman may also make recommendations for the organisation to follow, which can include an order for compensation. In layman's terms, money. The Ombudsman's decisions are normally binding on the organisation concerned, but not always. Let's talk about some of the advantages. Well, one of the first advantages is that if you do make a complaint which isn't dealt with appropriately and there is an Ombudsman service, it is free and you're not at risk of being uh, required to pay costs, which you would do on occasion if you make a claim at the county court or in the small claims court. It's a quicker process generally than going to the courts and it is a process which involves less formality than it would be if you went to court. In civil courts costs are normally paid by the losing party but that's not the case regarding an ombudsman situation so it's the least risk for someone who wants to challenge the decision. The benefits for the organisation I suppose are that it by causes bypasses or allows complaints to be dealt with without having to defend them all in court with all the legal costs that go with it. Now this is uh, a set of different ombudsmen. First of all, I'd like to point to the top of the slide where the term ombudsman and there's, there's a link um, to www.ombudsmanassociation.org. Uh, that is a registry place where all ombudsmen are registered and you can find out the different types of ombudsmen and what they actually do. This isn't a complete list, this is just some examples of ombudsmen. Um, 
some of the most important ones, for example, the Financial uh, Ombudsman Service, FCA, sometimes known as, the Local Government and Social Care Ombudsman, who deals with complaints about local government and also deals with complaints, a big issue now, complaints in relation to social care. That's not the NHS, that's care that local authority uh, provide or organisations provide on behalf of local authorities. Then we have an energy ombudsman, a ombudsman in relation to complaints about uh, electricity or gas and communications, telephone, things like that. We have an academic ombudsman, a legal ombudsman for dis some disputes, a service complaints ombudsman for the armed forces, a parliamentary ombudsman who also covers health service and social care, and information and commissioner's office who is effectively an ombudsman for data protection. There's other examples here of a, the more smaller ones like the motor ombudsman, the furniture and home improvement ombudsman or the removal industry ombudsman. These are all government appointed ombudsmen, as you can see, fin finance, data protection, local government, social care, parliamentary and health service, service complaint for the armed forces and housing. They're all government appointed ombudsmen. These are examples of non-government organisations, Mosa Ombudsman, Housing, uh, re sorry, Removals Industry, Furniture Ombudsman, Property, that's private rented property, Betting Adjudication, Dispute Service and the Independent Football Ombudsman. These are not, not set up by the government. It's important to remember you can't use an ombudsman service unless you've made a complaint and you've received a response to that complaint. So you've got to make an initial complaint to the organisation first and get a response, even if that response is to ignore you, you've still got to show that you've made the complaint and they will always ask for a copy of the complaint letter which i would always recommend you send recorded delivery you can't use an ombudsman service unless you've made a complaint next slide going back to the examples that we've already done let's highlight some of the key ones local government and social care ombudsman they look at individual complaints about councils they cover all adult social care providers care homes home care agencies and some other organizations providing local public services so a very important one Next one we want to highlight is the Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman. This one is a key because the, this Ombudsman can investigate lots of government departments and organisations. And there's a list there for you to see what 
the, uh, the Ombudsman can do. Probably the most senior and busiest Ombudsman. Financial Ombudsman, bank accounts, frauds, phishing, obtaining bank details, complaints against banks, credit companies and loan providers, against insurers, pension, financial products, etc. Again, a very key, important Ombudsman. And this is an example of all the other Ombudsmen. Apart from Ombudsman, uh, departments themselves and other agencies can conduct investigations on your behalf. For example, revenue and customs, inland revenue. They have a specific role in investigating whether someone's been paid the minimum wage or not. So if you've got a minimum wage complaint, revenue and customs can investigate it. Consumer complaints, for example, faulty goods, a pattern of dodgy dealing by a particular tradesman. You can report them to the trading standards office in the local uh, authority. Discrimination issues, you can put forward complaints about different forms of discrimination such as religion, disability, race, age, sex, sexual orientation, etc. Environmental health. Environmental health investigations uh, about waste, um, dumping chemicals and other ways and things like um, checking on restaurants and that sort of thing and local authorities um, you can report antisocial behavior problems with uh, neighbors um, in relation to property that is owned by local authorities or housing associations The list goes on. Other regulators, gas and electricity markets. We've got some separate ones for rail and payment systems regulators, water services, parliamentary commissioner for standards, children's commissioner, and charity commission for England and Wales. That concludes our short lecture on ombudsmen and different regulators, people you can complain to. As I say, my name is Anthony Hughes. I have a master's degree in law. I have a PGCE, that's a postgraduate certificate in education and training. I was called to the bar in 2002 and I'm a non-practicing barrister. My main area of expertise is employment law, but I've also specialised in human rights and things like that. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe.